What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week 33 deadline. So I'm going to go through the Liverpool lineup from, from last night and talk about what that means moving forward for game weeks 33 and 34. Then go through the press conferences, answer some of your questions and quickly go through my team at the end as well. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the Liverpool lineup against Atalanta last night to see if it will help us with minutes against Palace in game week 33 and, of course, the double in 34 as well. So Kelleher was in goal again, which is good for owners. Allison wasn't even on the bench. If you've got him, I would definitely play him for Crystal Palace at home in game week 33 and then reassess ahead of 34. I wouldn't be buying Kelleher right now because there is a chance that Allison is back sometime soon. The fact that he wasn't on the bench is obviously a good sign for Kelleher owners, but... There's a bit of a difference between an outfield player and a goalkeeper. Generally, when a goalkeeper is back and ready to play, he just plays. He doesn't need minutes off the bench. So it's not a guarantee that Kelleher will get both games in the double. But for now, I think you're pretty safe to play him against Palace and then just reassess next week. The fullbacks were Simakas and Gomez, so I definitely expect Robertson to come in against Palace. He could be the next best option outside of Van Dijk for the double. But I still am not completely confident in his minutes. So if you're going for a Liverpool defender and you've got the money, Van Dijk is still the only one. The good news is that Bradley and Trent were both on the bench and neither of them got minutes. And I think with Trent in particular, he will need minutes off the bench before he starts. So if you've got Bradley, he's good for game week 33. I think he'll start against Palace. Is he guaranteed minutes in 34? Absolutely not. But he's probably going to get at least one start. And the interesting thing from Klopp is he said, I think, after the game that Trent was nowhere near starting. They were never going to use him. He was just on the bench because they were allowed to have 23 players. Still seems a bit weird to put him on the bench if you're not going to use him, but that shows that he's not ready to start. So Bradley, good for 33, possibly 34, but again, we're going to have to reassess next week. And then the front line was Elliot, Nunez, and Gakpo. So Diaz and Salah got a rest. They'll both start against Palace. Nunez came off around the 60th minute. Uh, I didn't watch this game, but lots of people said he didn't play that well. And Jota got about 20 minutes. So that looks good for Jota's minutes going forward. Will he start against Palace? I still think it'll be Nunez, but he'll come off early again. Right now, in terms of picks for double game week 34, I think for the most part, especially with the attackers, Salah, Diaz and Darwin, you just stick with what you've got. I've got Darwin, but I'm not going to use a transfer to get rid of him. I'm just going to hope that he gets at least one start in the double. And even better if he gets two, right? Because he'll definitely get minutes off the bench if he doesn't play. But Jota is now an issue. I don't think it's a case that Diaz is massively better than Nunez. But maybe he is at the moment, right? Because Salah is first choice on the right. I think Diaz is first choice on the left. I think Jota starting ahead of Nunez at some point is not completely out of the question. But I think it really just depends on how your team is set up, right? If it's easier to get a forward in because you're happy with your midfield, I'd still buy Darwin, I think. But if not, Diaz is a perfectly good third option, as he has been for quite a while. I don't think I would go for Jota. I think there's just too much risk, given he's only just back from injury. Possibly, if he gets good minutes again in 33, and then we obviously see what happens against Atalanta next week, he could be an option for free hitters in 34. But I think if you're buying this week, I would still go for Diaz and Darwin. So realistically, the only players I'd be buying right now that I would be not even necessarily confident of two starts in game week 34, but that I think are good options are Van Dyke, Salah, and then one of Diaz or Darwin. I'd probably ignore everyone else. Could Kelleher owners and Bradley owners get away with it in 34? Possibly, but we're not going to know more until this time next week. All right, let's move on to the press conferences, and we'll start with Man City, which wasn't particularly useful, as you might have expected. So on Edison, Pep Guardiola said he was, re he was ready to play against Real Madrid, and he is ready for tomorrow against Luton at home. And we will make the decision. So it's possible that Edison's going to come back in the team. Hopefully, no one watching this has to buy a Man City goalkeeper this week. Because I would be ignoring Ortega and Edison until we see more. I'm just not confident Ortega's going to keep his place. And I think once Edison is back in, that will be his place. But I'd want to see it before I look to buy them. On Foden, he said, I would like to tell you, but I didn't speak to the doctors. After the press conference, we have a meeting and we will see. I still have the same opinion as I did the other day. If I had Foden and we don't find out that he's benched, I would just play him because it's such a good fixture. Obviously, if we do find out that he's on the on the bench, you can decide you know, whether to sell him if you're on wildcard 35 or maybe just to bench him and play someone else. If you don't own him, 
I think you probably just ignore unless you know for sure that he's going to start. It's just not worth the risk. Personally, I think that Harlem will start because it was a Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday turnaround. He didn't pick up a knock as far as we know or anything like that. De Bruyne obviously missed the round during game through illness, so I think he'll start against Luton. And I wouldn't be surprised if Alvarez also starts. So when you put all those attackers in, there's less and less space for Foden. If he does have a bit of a knock, why risk him against Luton? It's not a guarantee, of course. I could be absolutely wrong about that. And maybe it'll be that De Bruyne, Alvarez, etc. are on the bench again. But I just think with the info we have now, I wouldn't be buying Phil Foden. I just don't think it's worth it. Long term, ahead of the Dublin 37, he probably will be one of the main midfielders. I'm just not sure you necessarily need to bring him in right now. And then on Rodri, is there was speculation that he might get rested at some point soon. Pep said if he needs rest, he will have rest. I have the feeling we were tired in the last games. We were better in the second half. We will decide tomorrow what we have to do. Obviously, with Rodri out of the team, if that happens at some point, Man City are worse because he offers so much control in that midfield. But I just don't think... We're not going to see a situation where he's getting rested every other game. Not with the Champions League on the line, not with the Premier League on the line. Is there a chance he misses Luton and that affects Man City overall? Yes. But Luton have got so many injuries, I don't think that will matter. And also, as I mentioned the other day, rest can come in the form of early substitutions. And against Palace, he came off in the 73rd minute. Against Villa, it was the 74th. We might see that continue, and the minutes might drop even more. He might come off after 50, 60 minutes against Luton, especially if the game is already won. Just quickly on Luton as well, um, Edwards did his press conference. He said, no one is back from the Bournemouth game. Bearing in mind, Luton have already got a ton of injuries. And also said there were doubts over Mengi and Burke as well. And Kabori is ineligible to face his parent club, right? So he's on loan from Man City. So Luton have got a lot of issues. If you go to the FPL page and click on Luton, it's so many red flags for them. But I just don't see how this isn't anything but a big Man City win. So personally, because I think that Haaland's going to start, he's probably still the best captain for me. But given that Salah obviously got a good few minutes off in Europe. You could look at him as well. I do think Haaland will get taken off early, but with the amount of injuries that Luton have got, it's just it's really hard to go against him for captaincy this week. I think um, it, it, I do. I don't think that any team would just give up a match, right? And goal difference for relegation can play a big part as well. So Luton aren't going to want to go out and get hammered by Man City, but they might not be able to stop it. But I do wonder if maybe players like Mengi and Burke have just got a slight knock and he doesn't want to risk them. Because after Man City away, which is easily Luton's toughest fixture left this year, all the other games are winnable, right? Brentford at home, Wolves away, Everton at home, West Ham away, and Fulham at home. Luton are still obviously fighting for their place in the league. The Brentford game in particular and Everton ones are big because neither of those sides are definitely free from relegation. I don't expect either of them will get relegated, but if Luton could beat them, that would be huge. So... I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a couple of play extra players missing out, and that obviously plays into Man City's hands. So I think captaincy will all come down to how confident you are with minutes, but as it stands, I'm still going for Harden, I think. So let's talk about Arsenal next. Arteta confirmed that Timber will play an in-house game and also likely play with the under-23s as he steps up his return from injury. I don't think that makes a huge amount of difference for FPL. If you're buying an Arsenal defender at the moment, it's probably White, Saliba or Gabriel. Could Timber at some point play a part in the run-in? Yes, but he's missed so many games and obviously this is a crucial part of the season for Arsenal. I don't expect to see it anytime soon and I don't think he's going to usurp Ben White from that right-back position because Arsenal are defending so well at the moment. So not really a huge issue. Uh, he also said, we'll see if everyone is available. We have some hungover from Bayern but we will see tomorrow. So he's speculating that there might be a few issues in the squad. And it's it's worth saying that Gabriel, the defender, so not Jesus or Martinelli, wasn't seen in training. Now, maybe that means he's one of the players Arteta isn't sure will be available. I don't think that's a cause for panic just yet unless we get more information. Arsenal have obviously just played a midweek game against Bayern. They've got a game this weekend. It's the second leg against Bayern. Then they've got another midweek game the following week because of the Dublin 34. It might be that Gabriel just needed a bit of an extra rest and he's been given time to recover ahead of the weekend. If you've got Gabriel like I do, I'm still planning to play him unless something else comes out. Could this be an excuse not to buy him if you were going to buy an Arsenal defender? Absolutely right. You could just go for Saliba or Ben White for safety instead. 
but I don't think it's a huge concern. Just on, you know, anyone else that you might be thinking about buying Saka, Odegaard, Havertz, could they be part of what Arteta is saying? We'll see if everyone is available. Maybe. But Arteta is never going to give us news anyway. He likes to keep things vague. I wouldn't be panicking unless there's news ahead of the de deadline tomorrow. If you want to bring in Havertz or Odegaard or Saka, maybe even Gabriel, maybe a little bit less so about that because he's not been seen training, I'd probably still do it. So moving on to Spurs, apparently all the players that were available for the last match are available again for game week 33. So no issues with the likes of Werner, Brennan Johnson, Son, Madison, Porro, Udogi, etc. Richarlison will miss Newcastle away in game week 33 though, due to a knee, a knee injury. Foster Coley said he is close, but with next weekend off, the last two rounds are stacked with games and having him ready for that is more important. So after Newcastle away, we know that Spurs blank in game week 34. So they'll have two weeks until that Arsenal at home fixture in game week 35 as part of that double game week. And Spurs after 34 have two extra fixtures over most other teams in the league. Now, will Richarlison come straight back into the side? It's really hard to know because I think Brennan Johnson and Werner have actually done really well. And Son is great through the middle as well as obviously on the left too. I do think Richarlison probably makes the best 11 for Spurs. Spoken about this before, right? Werner on the left or Son, th uh, sorry, and Son through the middle or Son on the left and Richarlison through the middle, this, the latter is probably a better combination. But given how well some of the other players have played, it's not a guarantee that Richarlison will come straight back in. So I think for anyone that's held on to him this long, it probably is just worth getting rid of him. He's not going to play in 33. He's definitely not going to play in 34 because Spurs blank. And then you don't even know if he's going to get back into the team. It's also going to be a difficult decision for anyone that is wildcarding in game week 35 and wanted two attackers because there's going to be minutes concerns around a lot of those players. It's just not a guarantee of starts from then until game week 38. But that's something we can discuss closer to the time. But either way, Richarlison out this weekend. Everyone else that was available last week seems to be good to go again. So for Wolves, Gary O'Neill confirmed that Huang will be in the match day squad, which is obviously good news for them. I don't think there's a very high chance that he starts this game, though. We saw how they kind of managed and eased Cunha back into the side. So I think the most we're going to see from Huang is an appearance off the bench. Could he potentially be an option for game week 34? Maybe. But I want to see him get like 25 to 30 minutes this week and then hope for a start. With Cunha... That didn't even happen, right? He uh, came back for 14 minutes against Burnley in 31 and then 35 minutes off the bench against West Ham in game week 32. So it might be they do the same with Huang where he is benched against Forest, maybe benched against Arsenal as well and then comes back into the team for the second game of 34. So I wouldn't be pinning too many hopes on Huang, but he could be a big differential in game week 34. Um, he said Cunha is still fine. Dawson too is probably too early for Bellegarde. So if anyone's looking at Cunha or has already bought him in, I think this probably is the week where he does get that start. And then on Eight Nuri, which is the big one for a lot of people, he said he will travel with the group. He's had a minor issue, but I envisage him being part of the match day squad. Now that's that doesn't give me a huge amount of confidence in a start i envisage uh, sorry i envisage him being part of the squad he's not even guaranteeing it like he has with other players so personally if you can put off buying eight nuri till game week 34 i would probably do that whether or not you play him this week if you already own him that probably depends on which other defenders you have like on my bench for example i don't i don't own eight nuri but on my bench i've got doughty man city away and Zabani against Man United at home. If I had eight Nuri, I'd probably play him ahead of those two players and just hope that he gets the start. But obviously, there is a risk that he's on the bench and then comes on for a one-point cameo. So it really will depend who you have. If you've got other good defenders, I would just probably stick eight Nuri on the bench until game week 34. But there is a chance he starts if it's only a minor issue. I'm just not sure about that second part of him not guaranteeing that he'd be in the squad. I suspect he will be. I'm just not... 100%, uh, sorry, I'm not 100% confident that he will start the game. So moving on to Newcastle, it doesn't look like many of the players that were out are coming back just yet. Uh, Eddie Howe said the closest player to coming back would be Tino Liveramento. He is not trained with the team, but he has been out on the grass. So at some point, obviously, if he's back before Trippier, he's going to go to right back. But he's also an option to play left back for anyone that was thinking about maybe bringing in Lewis Hall. And either way, Lewis Hall has not trained at all this week. So is a so is a slight concern from last week. So he's not even guaranteed to play. Uh, other players are doing well in the background. So I'm hoping in the not too distant future, we can get three or four back. I think that's interesting on Trippier. 
So Tino Liveramento hasn't even trained with the team yet, and he is closer than Trippier to coming back. Now, I don't think Trippier is a major concern for the next couple of weeks anyway. If anyone was planning to have him on wildcard 35, or maybe even trying to free up the funds to bring him in, it might not be worth doing. I certainly wouldn't put too much... It's not even that I wouldn't think about it, but I wouldn't kind of destroy your team just to try and get Trippier in, given the information we have. Obviously, if you can leave a route where the players you bring in now are good either way and you have the money left for Trippier, then great. But it doesn't necessarily look like he's going to be back for 35, which is a little bit of a problem. So if you're buying a Newcastle defender, I think it's got to be Cher or Dan Byrne right now because those two should be nailed on no matter who comes back. There wasn't any other team news that I saw, so the likes of Isaac, Gordon... Uh, and Harvey Barnes should be fine. But also, just one other thing quick. This looks pretty good, I would say, for Spurs attackers. I know that Son hasn't been great the last couple of weeks, neither has Madison. But I do think that going away to Newcastle is not a bad fixture. They've got injury concerns. They're not necessarily going to just sit in deep and make you know Spurs unlock that defense. I think they will go for it, and that will give space to the likes of Son uh, Madison as well. So I actually think it could be quite good. So for anyone that is dead ending into 34 it might be better for most of you to kind of save your spurs players till 34 before you sell them it will all depend on what other moves you have to make if you need to sell one of them this week it's not a major issue but i do quite like that fixture especially with the injuries that newcastle have got so just on brentford thomas frank said that everyone from last week is available so presumably that includes ivan tony as well who didn't start against aston villa away but he did come on for about 10 minutes towards the end of the game. So you would think that he would start in game week 33 against Sheffield United and get the usual good minutes that he always kind of does. And that will be the case from now until the end of the season, as long as he's fit and available. Uh, Thomas Frank also said that Sharda is available and will make the squad same as Ethan Pinnock. Now, I think with Pinnock in particular, that is a big plus for that Brentford defence. Is he fit enough to come straight back into the 11? We don't know. But from game week 34, you would expect that to be the case so i wouldn't be surprised if brentford's defensive import uh performances sorry improve over the next few weeks and the fixtures are great next four sheffield united at home luton away everton away and fulham at home and then the last two after that are bournemouth away and newcastle at home now i don't know if many people need a new defender right now but especially for attackers like tony or in Burmo, there are big differentials there especially when people are focusing on double game week players some people have asked me are we getting too kind of caught up with double game week players and ignoring Brentford's great run and we probably are a little bit but it really depends on your you know chip situation if you've got a wild card after game week 34 then you're gonna dead end with double game week players and then wild card out of it and wild card into players that have doubles in 37 that just makes sense so this always happens in FPL the situation in terms of fixtures, doubles, blanks, and chips will always dictate the kind of players that you go for. And it just so happens for most people, it probably makes sense to ignore Brentford, even though they've got this great run of fixtures. On the flip side, if you want to bring some in, there's absolutely no issue with that whatsoever. It'll depend on how your team is set up, which chips you've got left. But for a lot of people, it probably does make sense just to go without. If you were someone with no chips, for example... And long term, you're not confident with Darwin's minutes because Jota is back. You're not really sure about getting Isaac in now because he's a little bit injury prone. I don't mind going for someone like Tony instead and maybe dealing with it later. And if it comes to, you know, double game week 37 and you don't have the transfers, you just hold on to him for the rest of the season. I don't mind stuff like that. But for a lot of people where you've still got free hits and wild cards to play, I don't know, ignoring Brentford seems kind of okay. Would I be shocked if Tony... Is one of the top scoring players this week and next week? No, absolutely not. But I'm still probably not looking at him myself. So who is the best third forward to own alongside Harlan and Isaac? Hoyland and João Pedro seem like the standouts, but are uninspiring. Now, this is probably from someone that's free hitting in game week 34. So he's thinking ahead to the doubles in 37. The third forward that I'm looking at is Nicholas Jackson. That's who I've got kind of earmarked to come into my team on wildcard 35. The problem, as I've said many times, if you're buying him now, is he's on nine yellow cards and he's got to get through two more matches without picking up one. Because if he does get another one in those next two games, he'll then be suspended for two matches, which is far from ideal. So you could take that risk, but you have to bring him in knowing that there is that potential that he just misses games. Outside of that, it probably is the two players that you mentioned, unless you just want to run through with someone like Ivan Tony, which I mentioned um, earlier. because. 
Haaland and Isak are obviously the two forwards from Man City and Newcastle. It's Nicholas Jackson from Chelsea. You've mentioned the two from Man United and Brighton. So that only leaves Spurs doubling in game week 37. And I just don't think you're going to buy someone like Werner because you can't be sure that he's going to keep his minutes long term. It would not be surprising if at some point Son is on the left and it's Richardson through the middle and Werner is just on the bench. So I think it is... The one that I've mentioned in Jackson and then Hoyland and Jao Pedro. I don't mind Jao Pedro at all as a nice cheap option who's on penalties as well. And I think with Brighton out of Europe, we shouldn't see so much rotation. But it is not a guarantee by any stretch because we know what De is like. But Brighton's fixtures are fairly decent, right? It's Man City at home in 34, but presumably anyone asking this question is free hitting. It's Burnley away in 33 before that Man City game. Then it's Bournemouth, Villa, Newcastle, Chelsea, Man United. So not a bad run. He's only 5.2 million. So that would leave your options open to bring in the likes of Salah if you wanted to or keep Salah on wild cards later on. Whenever it might be, right? It just gives you the option of having more money to spend. So I don't mind Jao Pedro at all as long as you're someone that can deal with the odd benching. And with Hoyland, I do think he's a nice pick for Man United. And the fixtures for Man United are very good. That will all come down to which other players you might want from Man United. Like for my wildcard, for example, I'm probably going to have three from Anana, Dallo, Fernandez, and Garnacho. But that's because I'll probably go for Nicholas Jackson. If Nicholas Jackson's suspended, I might just ignore him completely and go for Hoyland instead. So it's quite it's quite a difficult decision because there's kind of slight negatives about most of those players. The thing about Jackson though is if you get him and he gets through without the suspension he does have a doubling of 35 as well as 37 so that's why i quite like him because he's got the extra fixture straight away even though it's obviously quite a difficult one for chelsea so not really a right or wrong answer here it's something that could go horribly wrong it probably more depends on which players you want from those teams like if you want three other man united players just ignore hoyland if you and i like jao pedro because of the price but nicholas jackson is the one that i'm hoping to get on wildcard 35 so this sort of follows on from the last question. Is having double Man United defence, Onana and Dallo, worth it with the upcoming fixtures? Now, when I hear double Man United defence, it doesn't sound great. They've been an absolute shambles defensively so far this season. Bottom five for expected goals conceded for a long time now. But I also don't completely hate it because of the fixtures that are coming up. And obviously with one eye on the bench boost in game week 37. When I said this sort of follows on from the last question, it all depends which other Man United players you might want. For example, if you're not interested in Jao Pedro and Jackson and you want to go for Hoyland, but you also then want Garnacho as an enabler in midfield, you can only fit in one defender. So before you get Anana and Dallow in, I would think about what your future transfers might be. But I don't completely hate it. You don't have to play them both every single week either. And because of the, uh, the amount of shots that Man United give up, Anana's always decent for saves and stuff like that as well. So if we look at the games you might want to play them in, it's Bournemouth away this week, Sheffield United at home in 34, Burnley at home in 35, Palace away in 36. I wouldn't hate having to play one or two in any of those games. Like, look, Bournemouth away is not easy, right? Their attack is pretty decent. But honestly, if I had to play a defender in any of those four, I'd be okay. And then the double's not easy. Arsenal and Newcastle at home, you would expect both of those teams to score, but they're both at Old Trafford. And as part of a bench boost with good fixtures before, it's not that bad, I don't think. Brighton away in 38 is another tough one. But before that, I think it's kind of all right. So I don't think... I might go for it. There, there is a chance I'll wildcard in 35 with both players that you've mentioned because of the fixtures they've got and that bench boost. But... I wouldn't want to get into a situation where I was having to play both of them most weeks because I do think that could be just heartache and misery and pain from an FPL point of view. But I think individually, they're both good options. And if it works for your team to have both of them in your squad, it might be the end of the world, but hopefully not. So could you go over rolling transfers when using free hit 34? If you have two transfers before the free hit, will you have two after? And the simple answer is no. Anytime you wildcard or free hit, you'll always have one transfer the week after. So if you've got two transfers going into game week 33 and you only use one and then you free hit in 34, you'll have one transfer in game week 35. There is no way around that. Now, lots of people are asking, would you make this move before I free hit in 34? And I can't go through every transfer individually, like I said the other day. But generally, yes, I would probably make that move 
if it sets you up better for the long term. So examples I saw were, you know, would you do Darwin to Isaac this week if I'm free hitting in 34? And I think the answer is yes. Do I think that Darwin is a better option than Isaac this week? Maybe slightly just because of the fixture. But honestly, I think Isaac will probably get more minutes against Spurs and he's on penalties as well. And longer term, he's a better option. So I would make that move. Someone else asked me, would I do an Arsenal defender to a Man United defender? It's a little bit tricky because I do think the Arsenal defender is better this week against Aston Villa at home. But again, Bournemouth away is not awful. And the Man United defender might be more useful to you after your free hit in game week 34, especially if you're planning for that bench boost in 37. So no, you cannot roll a transfer for a free hit. It will not work. And for most people, I wouldn't burn a transfer this week even if it's a slightly worse player that you're bringing in for 33, as long as long-term they're a better option, in most cases I would just do it. So just going to quickly go through my team. Not much has changed since the team selection video. So in goal, I've got Neto for Bournemouth against Man United at home. Ariola still on the bench, who I might sell, and I'll come on to that in a second. Uh, with Bradley, I'm definitely starting him now after what Klopp said about Trent. I'd be really surprised if he doesn't play against Palace. Could he come off early? absolutely hopefully not before the 60th minute will i play him in game week 34 probably not because i'm going to sell son next week and that will give me the money to get van dyke but let's wait and see what is said about trent then i've got double arsenal defense of gabriel and saliba so i actually like my back three obviously did mention that gabriel wasn't seen in training as long as we don't hear anything else i'm just going to play him and if zabani has to come off the bench it's not the end of the world if we find out that gabriel is a doubt for this week but not out long term then I probably will make a defender transfer and just bench Gabriel and hold him for game week 34. The move would probably be at Doughty, maybe to eight Nuri, but I think with what Gary O'Neill said about him, I'm not 100% sure about a start. So it would probably be for someone with just a good fixture in game week 33, even if they don't double in 34. So maybe Rico Lewis is a punt against Luton or Regulon for Brentford. And then in game week 34, I will play Saliba, Gabriel, and then Bradley or Van Dyke, whoever I bring in. So whoever, whatever transfer I make this week it doesn't necessarily have to be for a double game week player. But I think Gabriel will probably be fine. So I'll just end up playing him against Aston Villa. Uh, midfield is Palmer against Everton at home, Salah against Palace at home, Son against Newcastle away, and Saka against Villa at home. No need to do anything with any of those players. I'm dead ending into game week 34. So Son will be sold next week for Eze most likely. And Palmer will be benched. I'll obviously play Saka, Salah, and Sarabia, as well as whichever midfielder um, I bring in. Because at the moment, I've got Sarabia on the bench. And even with Huang back and Cunha getting up to fitness, I still think Sarabia will play and start most games. He will get subbed off early, but there's no point in kind of worrying about that, especially if I don't have a spare transfer to deal with it. And then up front, it's Harlan captain against Lou, and I do think he'll start, so he will be my captain. If we get any news that he's benched, then I'll just switch the captaincy to Salah instead. And then I've got Darwin and Solanke. Darwin's minutes are a little bit of a worry, but both him and Solanke have got doubles in 34, so there's not really too much else to worry about. So Doughty to Rico Lewis or Reginon is definitely an option. If Gabriel looks like he's going to start, then I'm going to make... I think I'm going to make the goalkeeper switch. I can't think of anything more exciting or more interesting. And I'll just get Henderson or Pickford... I'm not sure which of the two I'll buy. Obviously, Everton have got to play Liverpool in game week 34, which is not ideal. But it's the kind of game where Everton will be right up for it, and they could keep the score down. But on paper, Palace have got two good home fixtures in Newcastle and West Ham. Do I expect two clean sheets? No. But on paper, they're the better fixtures. And I don't think there's a huge amount of difference between the Palace and Everton defense in terms of you know how hard it is to score against them so i think i'd end up buying dean henderson and just benching him this week and leaving my options open for bench boost in 34 i think right now the only way i'll end up bench boosting in game week 34 is if connor bradley is an option because then i can just sell son and doughty next week and just keep bradley and play him and bench boost with neto zabani whichever defender i buy plus um who's the other one Palmer as well uh so yeah like I said not a huge amount going on for me this week probably not a huge amount next week either I already know I'm probably going to buy Eze and Van Dyke, and then it gets more exciting for game week 35 so if you enjoyed that video make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already rate five stars if you're listening on podcast I will be back tomorrow for one more 
video slash stream ahead of Game Week 33, which will be the deadline stream, hoping to start about 9 a.m. UK time. So make sure to tune in for that. Otherwise, we'll do this all over again for Game Week 34, and I will catch you then.